What is up? My name is Derek Gaskins. This is my YouTube channel and you're probably clicking on this because you either have a clutch issue or you're looking at how to set air gap on your clutch. So right here is my LS3 that's going in my C5 Corvette. I'm running a monster clutch and they have specific settings for air gap. So we're going to get into it and I'm going to talk a little bit about air gap. <laughs> So this LS3 is going in my C5 Corvette. I use this car for drifting. So if you are into Corvette content and drifting, get the channel a follow. Hit that subscribe button for me. But yeah, so air gap. Air gap is gonna be the distance between this fork and the very bottom of your slave cylinder. So as you see to measure air gap, you have to remove your spring from your slave cylinder. This is a new GM slave cylinder. I took it apart, took the spring off. You have to have this thing down flush, just like that. So what they mean by air gap is your forks on your clutch disc, well, your pressure plate right here, whenever your clutch wears, these fingers will come out more as the clutch disc material wears down, which is common. And when you're talking thousands of an inch, a little bit off that clutch material is gonna make a big difference on your air gap. So. Monster doesn't like it to be more than 200 thousandths. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna measure the air gap. Like I said, you have to have the spring off. Be careful taking these apart. So there's two ways of doing this. Some transmissions don't have removable bell housing. There's another way of doing it. You would just come off the block to your forks. So what I normally do is I take another set of veneer calipers or dial caliper, whatever you wanna call them. And this is a pretty machined edge. So your fingers, you won't, if the bell housing was removed, this would go against your fingers and you would measure from here to the block. But you have to keep in mind, you'll see in a minute what I mean by what I'm about to tell you is you have to take the, me the measurements of this and subtract it from the number that you get because this is adding to your measurement. So I'm gonna show you how to do it with the bell housing on, which is how I'm gonna have to do it. And this being a Corvette, that's a torque tube and we're gonna call that the transmission in this case. So this is nice and flat. You just wanna lay this up against it. And as you can see, we're coming from this edge to your fingers. So I like to have a set of digital calipers. Make sure they're zeroed out, which it is. And I will go ahead and pull some out. And we are gonna lay this up against here like this. And I usually take it from two or three different spots. So we're gonna push in. All right, we touched our finger. So we're at 3.206. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna push that back in. Well, I'm, I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna measure from this side and just see, see it touched. So we're at 3.196. So I just go around and kind of check a few spots. Like that one touches, that one touches perfect. I'm gonna go back to the one I just did. I think we're hitting there. So we're right around 3.2. So I'm gonna write that number down on a piece of paper. So we're gonna go 3.2. Five. So now you have to subtract the number from the width of this. And I know the width of this is 0.659. So we're gonna go subtract 0.659. So we're gonna subtract that and see what we come up with. All right, so what we come up with, 3.215 minus 0.659, we come up with our gap at 2.556. So that number is gonna be important. That is our measurement for this. Now we have to do the torque tube or trans. All right, so with your spring off, you wanna go ahead and bolt your slave cylinder on. Just gonna go ahead and put some bolts in it. 
bolt it down as if we were just bolting it on, putting it in. I'll show you why that's important to check air gap. Be real tight because we're going to be coming off quite a few times. So you have to make sure this is 100% down flat or your measurement will be screwed up. So we are going to grab our veneer calipers. And what we're going to do now is we're going to lay this across like we did the bell housing. And what I like to do is I like to push on both ends. I'll take my thumb, push down on this. And over here, I'll push with my finger just so I know it's 100% flat. And then we're just going to measure a few spots with this. So just push down. We have a measurement here. And then kind of rotate and take another measurement from another spot. Pretty much the same. Pretty much the same. So whatever number we have here is gonna be our number. 2.889. So we're going to take that number and subtract our 0.659 from that. All right, so we have our numbers. So if we look right here, you always want your bell housing side to be a bigger number than your trans side. So if you have this number that you measure from your trans side more than this, something's wrong. Never want that. So after we subtract our veneer calipers, which is 0.659 for our bell housing, that's the number we got. For our trans, we did the same thing. That's the number we got. Subtract this number from this number, and that leaves us with 0.326. That is our air gap. Monster doesn't want more than 0.2 thousandths, or 0.200. We are over on our number. So now, to get that number lower, we have to add shims. So a great thing to always have anytime you're doing a clutch on the LS, anything, Camaro, I keep these always. Shim kit, Tick Performance sells these. You have a thin, a medium, and a thick, and they come in super handy. There's like, I think they're like 25 bucks for a set. And right now we need one. So we're gonna start off with the, which I already know, I, I know which one I need for this because I've already done it and I know I need the thick boy but I'm gonna show you by adding just a thin one where we get okay so adding them shin actually helped but it wasn't enough adding the thin one gave me 0.232 so at, uh, our last number was 0.326 this changed it and put it at 0.232 we're still close but not close enough so we need to keep going with our numbers. So with the medium size one, it got us to 0 0.203, which we're right on the money almost. But with the thick one, one right here, this super thick one, it got me to 0 0.151. We are pretty much perfect on specs. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this thick one. I'm gonna take this apart put this one under there and there's another problem that you have to rely on when you're doing these shims. This thing has a bevel on it that sits on the torque tube and trans if you have the trans and it helps keep everything centered. When you start adding these to the equation, you don't have nothing to center it but the bolts. And I'm gonna show you a way around that. So this is what I'm talking about. You have a stepped lip that sits pretty good and flush here. Keeps this thing from like once it sits down there, you have no, nothing rocking back and forth. Everything's nice and centered. Once you throw big boy on, you lose that ability. So now you can see she's just all over the place and has no way of centering it. That means your release bearing is gonna ride crooked on your forks. So the only way you can center this is with bolts. 
And another important thing is when you're using a thick shim, these bolts aren't long enough. Let me get this centered for you and I will show you what I mean. So you see, bolts not even started and it's really, really short. So you have to add longer bolts. So what I have is I found these in my bolt bin. These should be sufficient enough. They're eight millimeter heads. They're off a of Ford, but they're good bolts. So one, one thing I like to do is I got a bunch of O-rings over here and I'll take, I always take the smallest one that's in the set. And I will put it on the bolt threads. And if you look, it won't really fit in that hole too well. But if you can get it to go in that hole like that, then once you start the bolts, that O-ring is actually what's gonna help center everything. So now that I know that O-ring fits really good, I'm gonna run it up about halfway. Go ahead and get this bolt started. And I'm gonna take another small O-ring, put on the other bolt, and I'll show you when I run the bolts down how much more centered everything is. Because you do not want the thing riding sideways. All right, so this bolt is started. And I'm gonna try to zoom in on this and let you see how it just goes right in. But you can see. All right, so I'm, I'm there now. I wiggle while I turn and the o-ring just goes in now the only wiggle you have is in the threads so once this thing actually sits flush it's going to be perfect once you get all the play out of your bolts see now the bolts aren't tight they're not even touching like the washer still spin but you can see there's very little play in this. So those O-rings are taking up any bit of play there. So I feel good about this. I think now I can just zip my bolts down, torque them, and we're done. Simple as that. All right, so we're gonna go through the motions of what gap you need and whatnot. So essentially when you add a shim, you're getting this closer on the forks of your pressure plate. So let's say if we were where we were before, 0.326. This is further away. So that means when you put this, say you just call this your trans on, when you put it in, your clutch fingers are pushing this in. So let's say we're at, let's just say 500 thousandths of an inch. And let's say you put it on and your fingers only push this in that far. When you push the clutch, you're only getting that much range. So what that's doing is not pushing your fingers in enough to release your clutch all the way. So with this being further away, this doesn't have as much push because it can only go up so high. So let's just say we're at 500 thousandths and we're here. Let's say you push the clutch, it comes up and it's not pushing your fingers all the way. So essentially, if, let's say we add 100 thousand shim, we're getting a little more and then we have a little more push. So once we get the air gap set to the proper specs for the clutch, this thing is in a good range of motion. So now let's say, like Monster, they don't want no more than 0.06 thousandths of an inch. So what that means is this being too close. So if your gap is really, really, like ours right now with the big shim is 151 thousandths of an inch, 0.151. And they don't want to see no more than 200 thousandths of an inch. So let's say we had to shim too much and our air gap was way too tight what that means is when you put this say your trans on the slave is going to be in let's just say almost bottomed out so let's say let's say you put it in and there's not enough room here let's just say you had that much room with an air gap as your clutch wears in like i said earlier your fingers come out further as your material comes off your clutch disc let's say you set it to points Let's say 0 0.05 and we were that close let's say that the, your clutch disc wears and your fingers need to go more well what happens when you run out of travel down 
your clutch starts slipping because it's not 100% releasing. So that's why Monster wants their clutch within the range that they specify. So I hope that gives you a, a good understanding of what air gap is. So if you're installing stock OEM parts, there ain't even, there's nothing in the service manual about setting air gap. Just put the parts in, you're fine. But if you're putting an aftermarket clutch in, like a spec, a lot of times they'll come with shims. And if it comes with a shim and tells you to install it, you still it's still critical that you check them because I've seen times it'll give you a shim, just like the last one I done. They give you a shim, tell you to install it. So I measured and it come up not needing a shim at all. So it is very important to measure that. Pretty much if you don't get this right, you don't have enough room for your slave to go all the way back to fully release the clutch. So you'll have like very hard shifts, like trying to shift, it puts a lot of strain on your synchros and whatnot. Like a lot, a lot of Corvettes have problems with shifting at high RPM. A lot of times that's because the air gap's not correct on your aftermarket clutch. So I appreciate you watching. If you don't mind, hit that subscribe button. And if this helped you, give me a thumbs up and we'll see you in the next one.